for more on this. Ari Fleischer, former White House Press Secretary, Fox News contributor. Ari, as she was doing that report, I was having flashbacks. I mean, we've been through this. Yeah. You know, I love bacon, but not on Capitol Hill. Uh, this is disastrous for Republicans, and, and I hope they realize that. Republicans are increasingly becoming the party of outsiders, of populists, of the little people. And every one of these provisions, members of Congress think it helps them politically at home because it will make a museum director happy. It'll create five jobs, 10 jobs, 15 jobs. It'll make a mayor happy. None of that adds up to your reelection. What does add up is the ridicule and the mocking that you're going to get for special interest provisions, everything being a symbol that the government is too big, spends too much money, is out of control, and you're now part of the mess. I think this is a disaster for Republicans. Ari, right, I don't know if you can see the programming screen there, but there, I mean, <laughs> it's just going by your left ear and it just keeps on going and going. You, you remember the video of the, <laughs> of the shrimp on a treadmill? That was kind of, that, that was the symbol for what these earmarks are all about. Yeah, I mean, you just had $3 million for an app to track where a bus is? I, I, you, you can probably get that from Amazon.com for about $15. I, mean, I, I This is Republicans succumbing to something they thought would be helpful. They thought they could show constituents they're getting money. If the Democrats are doing it, Republicans should do it. No. If one party's doing it, the other party should stand on a higher ground, on high principle, and rise above and attack the other party over it. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I know that I think that some of the, some I think some members of Congress that might be maybe their gut instinct is to be against it, but they have FOMO. They have the fear of missing out. Like what if they don't get something yeah. that, that they wanted? Also wanted to ask you about this yesterday. I'm sure you saw the news that Facebook's oversight board said um, you were wrong. It wasn't right for you under your rules to ban him. We understand why you banned President Trump, but now you have six months to figure this out. So it gets kicked back, almost like in the court system when the Supreme Court kicks it back to the lower court and says, actually, you have to try again. I, I love this. I absolutely love the fact that the board that Facebook set up to save Facebook is now saying to Facebook, we won't save you. Facebook has to make a decision. And that's the way it should be, frankly. And, I, you know, Dana, I, I just favor free speech. I don't understand how you can ban President Trump, a former president, yet you let the president of Iran, the president of China, all kinds of people on there, and you ban an American president who half the country wants to hear from. So e even if half the country doesn't want to hear from him, you should listen. And if you don't like what the person's saying, vote against the person or ignore the person. But I... I, I Facebook's got a tough decision to make. I hope they come down on the side of free speech. You think we'll get a decision within six months? I mean, because essentially yesterday we just we threw it off to the fall. I mean, perhaps. Well, they don't have to. Maybe, maybe that was the intent all along. Facebook can drag its feet. It can ignore this board. It can just say we banned him for life. Nothing's changed. Or we banned him. Nothing's changed. Uh, so it's, it's totally up to the Facebook leaders. And they're going to have to face us. So all the social media sites, you know, it, it really is a side of the, in our country, how suppressive and repressive these social media giants have become toward conservative thought. And there's conservative thought that I don't like, I don't care for, but I'll blip right through it. I'll never support banning it. The Wall Street Journal said something similar. They said that progressives are furious that the social media giant offers a forum for conservative speech and have demanded that it censor a range of First yeah. Amendment expression. Just a last thought. Do you, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, yelling yesterday about all of this, um, especially on Capitol Hill. Uh, do you think that actually anything gets done? My prediction is probably not. Uh, yeah, I don't know that Congress is going to be able to organize itself to do something meaningful against these tech giants. I, my experience, Dana, is every time the government steps into something like this, it makes it worse. This is the private sector. They have the right to ban anybody. I just think it's corrosive to the national interest to start banning speech that you don't like. Defeat the speech. Don't ban it. But if you get banned, you should have recourse to take action. And there seems to be, seems to be some, some momentum for that on the Hill. We'll see whether or not it goes somewhere. A lot of people will talk about Section 230. That's a big ass, apparently, for Congress right now. Yeah. At least that's the, what the, the Unless read. Unless they throw it in with the earmarks. Have. Yeah, <laughs> you, you could do that in the shrimp of the treadmill. All right, great to see you, man. Come back soon, okay? All right, Fleischer. <laughs>